Alright everybody, welcome back to a brand new PDC Joe video, and today guys, we're going to be taking a look at a new Line Can Rock archetype for the standard format, and that is going to be a dual Line Can Rock deck. Now, both of these Line Can Rocks are very good cards, and Line Can Rock does have some pretty good features. And what this deck likes to do is you can actually use two different Line Can Rocks. So you got this Line Can Rock with the attack Crunch and a Cell Rock. And it's not that bad, you know, Crunch can be a great attack to slow the opponent down, and Assault Rock can be a good attack to get big damage in. Now, will you ever use Lycan Fang? It's questionable if you really think Dangerous Rogue is not really useful. Let's be real here, Dangerous Rogue is clearly the best attack between the two Lion Rocks. And then you have this Lion Rock, and the Main Knight Form 1 is also very good. It's got an ability this time, when, when you play Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon, you may switch one of your opponent's bench Pokemon with their active. So it's basically a built-in Lysander, which is really good. You force something up in the active, and then you hit it with a Claw Slash or a Dangerous Rogue. It's a very good attack that can be a very good way to deal with Pokemon on the bench that can become threats down the road, or, you know, just clear the board. Now, this Lion Rock has a different attack in Claw Slash. For one fighting in a DCE, you do 110 damage. So 110 damage, not a whole lot of damage for three energies too, and it's not really that good, but at least you can power it up with DCE, so it makes it a little more better. And then it has the attack Dangerous Rogue, which is the best GX attack between the two Lion Rocks, in my opinion. Um, Dangerous Rogue, for two energies, you can do 50 damage times the amount of Pokemon on your opponent's bench, which is really good, because if they have a full bench, you're going to be doing like 200 damage, 250 damage, it's insane. You're going to one-shot mostly everything with Dangerous Rogue. Dangerous Rogue is going to be clearly the way to play the Lion Karak. Instead of going with a um, Lion Can Fang, I do think you're going to be using Dangerous Rogue more than you're going to be using Lion Fang, so that's how that goes. So with this Lion Karak deck, you have a split between both Lion Karaks, so you can choose which Lion Karak you want to go with. And it's going to be a fun deck, and it's a good archetype. Lion Rock also does hit for very good weakness. The fact that it's a fighting type, it just means it's going to be hitting some big Pokemon for weakness. It's going to be hitting Drampas for weakness, which is really important. A lot of people are predicting Drampa Garbodor to be a big deck. So Drampa we, being weak to fighting just means that Lion Rock has an easy time dealing with Drampa. It also hits stuff like Darkrai for weakness, which isn't too bad either. Um, it hits Umbreon for weakness, which is good. It hits Lightning Pokemon for weakness. It doesn't hit Tapu Koko for weakness, because Tapu Koko only has no weakness. So you can't actually hit Tapu Koko for weakness. Um, but you can hit other Lightning Pokemon for weakness, like Jolteon and stuff like that, which isn't too bad. So Lion Karak does have a lot of good stuff that it can hit for weakness on, which does make Fighting Type and Lion Karak a lot more stronger. Now, Lion Karak also being a stage 2 means that you can run Evolutions with it. So we're going to be using Flareon. One of the biggest downsides to using Lion Karak is that it is weak to grab. Meaning that Lorantis, Decidueye, Tapu Bulu, they're going to have an easy time beating this Lion Karak deck. So with Flareon, it allows us to hit them for weakness, giving us a little bit more of an advantage in dealing with them. And then we also have Vaporeon, which can help us out in the matchups against Volcanion. Now we don't play Jolteon in the deck, and honestly, you don't really need Jolteon. I mean, the Lightning weaknesses aren't really that important right now. I mean, what's weak to Lightning? Eveltal, Shaman, uh... Lugia? <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe Mega Rayquaza, but I think the Mega Ray matchup is fine. I mean, look, uh, uh, look a Lion Can Rock deck before the Guardians Rising set came out with Carbink, this Lion Can Rock ended up beating a Mega Ray deck. If this can beat a Mega Ray deck with ease, then this deck can't cap. I'm just kidding. But yeah, I don't think the Mega Ray matchup is too bad. Um, but again, you're really not hitting many things for Lightning. I mean, the only real big thing you're going to be hitting is maybe Eveltal because you are resistant, or not resistant, uh, Eveltal is resistant to fighting, meaning you're going to be doing less damage to them. Um, same thing with Shaman though too, I mean, but again, you're going to one-shot Shaman anyways. All you need is a strong energy and a, or a choice band and Claw Slash. It's not that hard to deal with Shaman. So, Jolteon I don't think is good. I think you can go Flareon, Vaporeon. I think Flareon is most important in Evolution just because you are weak to grass, so Flareon gives you a bit of an advantage in those grass matchups. Now, to build, give our Lycrox like, more versatility and some better matchups against energy removal decks, we are going to be running a 2-2 Carbink line. Carbink allows us to put two of energies from our discard pile to one of our Pokemon. This is going to be our way of just rebuilding up our Lion Rocks. The fact that it says attach two energy cards just means we can put any energy, so like DCE and stuff like that, which is kind of cool. And um, so Carbink is going to be a good way to deal with Sylveon matchups and a good way to power up our uh, Lion Rocks once again in the early games, maybe. So it's nice. 
these are only attackers. Some other things you could throw in, some other attackers, I guess. Um, if you want to, you could run a single Zygarde in the deck. The reason I don't like having Zygarde in here is because, yes, it's a non-EX attacker, or, not, what am I saying, a non-evolution attacker, okay? It's got a lot of HP, 190 HP, which is nice, it's a bulky card, but the only problem with it, it's not really serving a big purpose in this deck. You are playing All Cells Burn, and also, it's weak to grass, so it's not really going to help in those grass matchups. It's not going to be able to work with Flareon, so I don't think Zygarde is good in this deck. It could be, but again... It's up to you. The only good thing I can see about using Zygarde is the fact that uh, Rockruff being a stage, um, a basic going into a stage one Pokemon can mean that you might just get knocked out anyway. So I mean, if you want to have Zygarde as like a non, nice like non basic, non evolution attacker that can get you know early damage on, you can go Zygarde. Um, those are really the only attackers I can see to be honest with you. I think Tapu Lele can serve well too with Energy Drive in the early game. So yeah, those were all of our Pokemon in here. Um, we're going to go into our items. First thing we got is Enhanced Hammer. I like having these energy removal cards like Hammer and Flagrant in the deck. It flows really nicely with the Crunch promo Lincoln Rock. So we are going to be running Hammer for that reason. We got one Escape Rope. Escape Rope is always nice. We got two Field Blowers. Field Blower is great to get rid of tools like Choice Bands and stuff. But it also can get rid of Float Stones on Garbodors, Meaning that you can then do Bluffler CI. So we are going to be playing two um, Field Blowers. We do play one Level Ball since stuff like Eevee, Flareon, Vaporeon, Rockruff, and Carbank all benefit from level ball you can probably go too if you really wanted to don't know what you would take out though we did play one rescue stretcher in the deck too rescue stretcher is just nice as a way to get your pokemon back you don't need super odd since carbink is already in the deck um four ultra balls to grab stuff you need four via seekers for the supporters we do play one brooklet hill brooklet hill is a great way to get fighting pokemon on your bench like rock rough and carbink um, we are going to be playing a split of Brooklyn Hill and one Parallel City. Parallel City is a good way to force our opponent to discard important Pokemon on their bench. And also, I guess, if you really need something to help you in the Mega Ray match, there you go. But, again, Mega Ray will probably out smoke you in stadiums anyway, so there's no point. You could run Sudo Widow in this deck if you really wanted to. That would be another good option. Um, but I think you already have enough Pokemon as it is. Um, one Lysander. I don't... Eh, you don't really need two Lysanders when you have both Thirsty Eye. Um, three ends for your draw support, four sickets for your draw support. Uh, we do play one Professor QE, which can help with draw support, but also help us do 20 more damage, because sometimes you might need it, right? If you think about it, you put a strong energy on this Claw Slash, you're going to be doing 130. A Choice Band turns into 160, so you're not actually going to one-shot a lot of stuff. But with QE, you can do 180, which will help you one-shot stuff, right? Uh, one Olympia, just to heal and switch. We do play one Flare Gun. Again, the energy removal cards flows nicely with Crunch. And we got one Pokemon Fan Club in this deck, and I like Fan Club. I was thinking of putting Bridget in the deck, um, but I didn't think Bridget was needed. Um, so I think you could play a Pokemon Fan Club instead. Grab two basic Pokemon. It's a nice way to just, you know, grab basic Pokemon without having to burn an item. It's great in the Garbodor matchups. That's kind of why I like having this. When you're playing against Garbodor, the one thing you never really want to do is spam your items. And if you have to play two level balls over the fan club right you can take fan club out throw in an extra level ball if you wanted to the problem with that is it's more items that garbador wants to be in your discard pile with fan club you can grab two pokemon and put them on your bench it's basically kind of like another way of getting pokemon in play without having to use ultra balls and level balls and stuff like that and that's why i think fan club is important in this list three choice bands to do more damage we do play one float for the free retreat on something uh four strong energies to do more damage five basic fighting energies and we got two dces DC works nicely with your Line Karak Midnight form, Tapu Lele, and I guess Shaman if you want to go that route. So we do play two DCs in the deck with it. So this is my Line Karak Evolutions build. The dual, the dual Line Karak deck is here. So let's see if this deck has some competitive value to it. Let's hop into some matches with the deck, see in action, and see if the double Line Karak deck is going to be a good deck to try out and bring to tournaments. Let's see. Alright, here we go. Let's go find some more matches or some more matches. What am I saying? Let's go find some games now with our uh, Lion Karak deck. We'll see. We'll see. But yeah, again, one of the best parts about Lion Karak right now is it just the fact that it hits for so many good weaknesses is just incredible. Like that is something that really makes Lion Karak work really well. And it looks like we are going to be up against a Psychic deck. I've been playing PCGO all day and it just seems like Psychic is all I'm going to be playing against. So that is lovely. But if it's Garb Trampa, then it will be even more lovelier because that's one of your better matchups, I think. So we are going to win the coin flip here, which is good because when you play a stage one deck, going first is always better. And that's awesome. So we'll start with Rock Rock and we'll see what kind of a, a deck my opponent is going to be running here from the Mulligan. He plays Hammers. All right. That, I can't wait to play against the Hammer deck. Hmm. I don't know. 
I guess it's garbed hammers, as annoying as that is, I guess it is. So I guess Carbink is going to play a big role in this matchup. So we are going to have to try and find our Carbink very, very soon. But we can draw some cards here, which is good field blower. I was hoping for Carbink. Or not. Alright, we'll just get rid of these guys, and I think we just got to grab ourselves Lele. Sure. Lele for N, I guess? I guess. Not much else we can do. I think we go Lele N. And I'm hoping we can find a Carbink here or another Rock Ruff. That'd be nice. And I don't want to play that many items, but yeah, it looks like we're not going to hit it. Lovely. Hmm. I think we're going to have to go Ultra Ball here. Yeah, it's fine. Get rid of these guys. And we'll just get Carbink down. Carbink is just really important in this matchup. Because the only way we can get energy back, we're playing against these hammer decks. It's the only way we can get our energy back. And I think I'll pass. This fight and energy is probably not going to stay on my rock rough this turn. So rip the energy. But as long as we can get a Carbink break, then we can get it back. Alright, come on. Yes, okay, thank god. So if we actually keep our energy, I'll be very, very happy. So let's see how many items we played. Two so far. So we've only played two items. It looks like we are going to have to play at least one more, or two more possibly. Interesting, get should have best beyond. Is he going to knock on my rock rub this turn? Is he about to float, retreat, DCE into a Lele and take out my rock rub? I hope he doesn't because I would suck. But let's see if he does or not. See what he gets here. If he goes N, I'll be fine because I don't really want to have to play a Via Seeker. Um, no, he's going Lily. Alright, rip. I mean, at least not in because one thing is if he goes in then we won't have to play either via seeker or field blower here because i don't want to play that many items in this matchup but it looks like might have to so you see another nest ball or me probably gonna get another uh no i was thought he's gonna get another trubbish down my opponent is opting for the ev we are gonna see an espion come down but thankfully it's only doing 30 damage the confusion doesn't really matter which is fine at least he ain't knocking me out. If he had a choice ban, it wouldn't matter either. So at least our rock ruff is living, living out here, folks. Trans male whiffs. That's good. And all right, we actually kept our energy though too, which is kind of surprising. I wasn't expecting that. All right, what do we get? Sick up. Really? Oh my gosh. I I think we can just go N. Or sicka. You know, we'll go sicka. Whatever. I'm going for it. I'm I'm risking it all. I thank god we hit something. I was worried we wouldn't. Uh, yeah, we'll play that. We can crunch him at the very least, and then set up a, uh, Cell Rock knockout. I mean, we have to kind of just play these items, though, guys. I don't think we have a choice. I, get, I need to get another Rock Rub down anyways. Just in case he somehow knocks me out, I don't know if it is possible, but you never know. So we'll just crunch him here for, uh, 60. He's probably gonna confuse me again, and then we're probably... And he's even got the blinged out energy. Yeah, we're probably gonna get confused. Uh, we do have our Olympia though. Um, so that's good. But yeah, how many items have I played? So we played six, so he's doing 60, 80, 100. So he's doing 100 right now. Sycamore again. He got rid of an enhanced hammer, which is awesome. Because that could easily get rid of our strong energy or something. Okay, field blower. I was kind of worried about that. I didn't want to put the choice band on. Hammer. And he gets heads. Lovely. At least, okay, at the very least, so he didn't field blow remain my uh, float stone, which is the good thing. And another super rod, okay. Dude, man, I hate Garbodor so much. That card, I hope it gets banned. I really do. Yeah, we're gonna have to play a lot of items in this matchup, guys. It doesn't look like I can do much. I would like to use his enhanced hammer, though, but I don't think I can now. I mean, if we can get a, uh, Sycamore again. Okay, Sycamore, come on. Come and collect for us. Okay, that's not too bad, actually. Okay, what can we do here? I guess we can go into Carbink. Yeah, sure, that's fine. We can rope into Carbink. I don't know what we can knock out, but it is what it is. We'll see what he does bring up. I'm hoping he brings out Garb. I don't know. We played a ton of items, though, which is the only bad thing. But if we can take out a Garb, then I'll be fine. We just gotta be careful though. He's bringing out Eevee. Alright, he's sacrificing the Eevee then, which is fine. So we will just go with a nice diamond gift for a knockout. And we will go two fightings, and I think we'll just put him on 
put him on the other line croc. We put him on that one. It's already got damage. Sets up for a psychic knockout. So we'll take our prize here. Anything good? Brooklet Hill? Okay, we'll take it. That gets us a uh, another rock ruff on the bench. So he's bringing out Espeon, so he's not going to try and take me out with Garb, which is a good thing, meaning I can retreat. Hand Hammer. Oh my god, never mind. <sighs> and a VS Seeker for a Lily. He's not going Sycamore, so that means his two cards in his hand must be that important for him not to want to discard them. Which is interesting. It's kind of annoying those guys got the hammers, but if we can keep getting our energy back, that's fine. If I can keep attacking him with Carbon Break, that's not too bad. So he's going to Side Beam for 30. Okay, what do we do? What do we do? Line card. We'll go Brooklyn Hill in before Delinquent. He probably plays Delinquent. I mean, this dude's already got the annoying hammer, so. Put another Rock Ruff on our bench. I guess we'll just DC and retreat. Sure, I don't want to end him. So, kind of sucks. This energy discarding stuff is starting to get on my nerves, but. Uh, yeah, I guess we gotta go Crunch. Do we end him, too? Do we need to do the end? Nah, we have the line croc in our hand. We can control this. So we'll crunch off that psychic. He probably has a supporter. He went to via, he went via seeker for Lily over Sycamore, meaning he probably at least has one other supporter in his hand. Hmm. Is Garb knocking me out? Oh, he's gonna end me. Okay, that's fine. Does he? Is Garb knocking me out? Let's see. 20, 40, 80, 120, 160. Okay, he's doing like 160 or 180 right now. And just a side beam, okay. Strong. Hmm. Do we risk it for the biscuit? I'm thinking like we risk it and go try and hit him with a, a, an assault rock. Oh, can we knock him out? 120. Put strong energy on. We're doing. We're doing 80. And I was thinking like maybe we can trap something. We could do our bloodthirsty eyes now. Hmm. Yeah, let's try it. I'm gonna see if I can get lucky here. And, uh, see if we can take down this garb. This is risky, but if this if this hits heads, and it does, okay, good. We could've took out the Espeon, but we take out garb, though. It just removes a uh, threat off the board. He'll probably take me out. He probably has a DC within his hand. I don't know how many he'll play, but he probably has at least a DC. So he will probably take us out here with a Psychic unfortunately but then we can just respond with carbon break build up our other line can rock and kind of just keep going from there but i think it's safer just to take out the garbs has he played a super rod let me check i think he has right i swear to god he's not a super rod yeah so he's played a super rod he probably doesn't play any more than one he plays two rangaroos so yep there's a psychic we will go down from a psychic and we are probably gonna get into four here too Hopefully we can find the energy though for our carbon. If not, that could be kind of bad, but we should be able to hit it. We haven't played too, too much energy. Still for strongs. Alright, come on. Don't do this game. Give us the lovely. Give us via seeker and an energy or an in or something. Okay, that works. That works. Crushing hammer. Tails, thank god. And at least he's using that at a time where I don't know if it matters. So it's better him from to kind of waste it like that. And a psychic, so. Oh, we're not getting knocked out actually. Wow, we're living. That sets us up for divide, unfortunately, and there's really no way. I could risk it again. Should I do it? Should I play the... How many? Okay. Do we have our other DC in the deck? Let me check. Before I uh, try and go set up it. Okay, we do. I'm thinking we can risk it here. I mean, he probably has another DC in his hand, so I can't really... I could retreat and crunch him, but then he just does the bite GX. I think we just let him try and knock me out here. Sure. We'll risk it. And if it doesn't pay off, we will bring out the baby carving. Hey! Okay, we are getting lucky with our confusion flips. That is really unexpected. I was not expecting to get this lucky, but it looks like we are. I should have went Ultra Ball. The reason I didn't play it is because of Garb. I mean, it doesn't matter at this point, but it's, it's fine. But it looks like our uh, lucky plays are paying off. And all we really need is an energy and a Lysander to just win the game with a dangerous rogue on that Lele. So that'll be good. And we'll see if my opponent will end me again. I think he's down to his last via seeker. He is. He still has a few ends left from the looks of it. Question is, will he find an energy and a garb? We'll see. I mean, I think he grabbed a garb there. He still has three Orangaroos down. 
I mean, three Rangus is a little overkill, but uh, I mean, hey, don't uh, knock, don't knock on it. But we'll see. There's another hammer that could be devastating. And of course, it heads. That's awesome. Have we played our shaman? We haven't, so we can grab shaman here instead of ending him, because we can't really end him and then get two cards. Those two cards might not be anything. Sycamore. Okay. Does my opponent hit a DC or a psychic? He's played four so far. And if he whiffs a psychic, I mean, this is going to be huge. There's an EB. Okay. Trainer's mail. That's not. He's low on cards, too, which is also a good thing. I don't know. Maybe we can trap an Orangu in the active spot. He didn't hit. Wow. That is huge. All right. Let's see what we have left. We still have two via Seekers. We still have Olympia. We still have Floatstone. Floatstone is still nice to see. Uh, let's just choice band uh, the line can rock. Sure. Do we need to do rescue stretcher now? No, we don't. Okay, we'll go ultra ball. Get rid of the flare on an Eevee. Those two are completely useless right now. Grab ourselves shaman. All right, sorry about that cut. Had to uh, pause the recording really quickly because uh, my uh, mom was calling my name. All right. Uh, I don't want to end him. Really don't want to end him here. But it looks like we might not have a choice. Yeah, might not have a choice. We'll have to end him. I mean, he's close to getting decked out. So I don't know. Maybe we can, like, end him getting decked out. We didn't. Kind of figured. He's probably going to hit energy here, too, though. I think I'm just going to retreat into the other car bank for now. Yeah, that's fine. Sure. Maybe, okay, he hasn't taken a prize yet, meaning maybe he still has, like, an energy prize somehow? Another Espeon, really? And he concedes. Alright, never mind. He's, he's out. Maybe he was out of energy, who knows. But it looks like we are gonna get our daily challenge done, also meaning we're gonna be enough for a pack. Let's see how much energy he played. He plays 10, so he plays... Seven, 8 Psychic Energies. Wow. So, he, did he have 4 prize then or something? So that's pretty crazy. But that's good. <laughs> we're, we're close to getting my boy Toad here. But I think I already have enough size for toes, so I don't need it. But we we will be able here to buy a pack from the shop, which I will do. We are going to buy ourselves a Guardians Rising pack from the store. I'm just going to keep buying Guardians Rising packs until I can't buy a pack ever again in my life because I need to get more cards from Guardians Rising. So we will buy ourselves a Guardians Rising pack. Let's see if we can pull a GX or not. I opened up a Sun and Moon pack yesterday that I got off the uh, ladder or the wheel, and I ended up pulling a full of gumshoes. And when I opened up two more Guardians Rising packs, I didn't get anything out of them. So maybe this will balance it out. GX? Oh my god, Sharpedo. <laughs> this card sucks. Uh, we got a reverse multi-switch, which isn't bad if I ever want to use multi-switch. Which I think is still a pretty decent card. Not terrible. Not a terrible pack, I guess. Could've been better. Could've been better. We will find ourselves another game here. That was a good game, though. We beat out a matchup that could be bad otherwise. So, looks like we are up against Volcanion, which... The only problem is, is Baby Volk knocking out my Rock Ruff on turn one. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Okay, we win the coin flip, which is fine. Um, if we could start with, like, either Carbink or something, would be good. But if this is a matchup where Vaporeon is very, very important. So we're going to have to try and get our Vaporeon here. So hopefully the Eevee and Vaporeon are not prized. It could be possible. They could both be prized. Oh, he's not playing. Okay, never mind. <laughs> My opponent is not running Volcanium. Now that is very misleading. He's even got the Water and Fire deck box. I think he's, like, trying to clickbait you. He's probably, like... He's pulling like a, uh, he's pulling a Derv or a Pro Gamer J. He's trying to clickbait you into thinking he's playing Volcanion, but he's not. I think this is just either Espeon Evolutions or another Garbodor deck. Most likely going to be another Garb deck, which is just choice of fun. But we have a decent hand. If he doesn't play Hammers, I think I'll just put the DC on. I mean, Carbon Break lets me put Energy Energy on. I don't know. You draw an extra card, let's see. More energy to discard, okay. Final B, that basically confirms he plays energy removal. That sucks. But we'll go Sika. And I'm hoping we can find ourselves some rock rust to put on the bench. Okay, we don't. Okay, we can get rid of Flareon and Vaporeon. I don't think he plays anything else. I'll right, we'll grab Rock Ruff. Yeah, I don't think he plays any Pokemon we can really hit for weakness. And I think we pass. We can probably just hit him with a Karmic next turn. We can find another strong energy. Maybe we can diamond gift for a knockout on this Bunnelby. But we can get some energy and play next turn. All is good and well. 
might even okay i think we'll play risky and get rid of the energy and hope to hit one here off the sycamore and then we can grab a line rock so we see a nest ball so he does play garb so my opponent is one of those garb kids kappa hammer i knew he played hammer all right that's fine that's just more energy to put in my district pile for garbink so it's better than nothing He's going to end me. I like that hand, but hey, you know what? If he gives me a better hand, then I will not complain. Let's see. So we've only played two items so far. And by better hand, he didn't give me a better hand. That sucks. So he's going to go burrow, and he gets rid of another item. Awesome. Burrow again. Please don't get rid of a carbon break. Energy. All right. Energy is fine. Parallel city. Okay, we'll do that to my opponent. Make him only have not that much fence space. Try and hit delinquent here. Do we need to do Lele? I'll probably just get a supporter. I don't need to play anymore. I think we'll just get Fan Club out of the deck. I don't, know, I don't think I'm gonna need to play Fan Club at this point. So I think we got a Sycamore again and lose way more energy than I really want. But I don't know if he can really knock out my Carving Break anytime soon with a Bundle Beep with two retreat costs. So that's fine. Can we find our Carving Break? We do. We also get Line Karak. Hmm. I would play it if we could, not, if we were able to knock out that Espeon, but we can't. But we will put Linecroft down anyways. Hmm. I guess we can force the EV in the active. Because he could still mill me with Bunnelby. Force him to find a Psychic to get Espeon in play. That's fine. So we'll just build up our Linecroft here. Seems good. We, still, we also have Life Center discard, so maybe next turn we will retreat into Linecroft. Maybe try and take out the uh, Trubbish. So he is going to go Espeon here. And I think we either got to try and go Dangerous Rogue to knock it out. Or I guess just get really lucky. I don't know. He already has 40 damage on him. So. No, we're actually knocking him out already. Delinquent. Lovely. I'm going to keep that Choice Band. It's the only way we can knock him out. That's all he's doing, though. That's fine, because all he did was evolve an Espeon and go Delinquent. Yeah, it looks like that is. Okay, good. We keep our Carving Break around, too. And we can knock him out. Just gotta be careful for energy, man. I don't know how much energy... Got, don't have that much energy left, so we gotta be really careful. So, we'll just take him out here with a Claw Slash. Sure. Yeah, that's fine. All right, we'll go Sycamore. How many uh, items have I played since that via Seeker? So that's 40, 60, 80, 120. Okay, 120. So he's not knocking me out quite yet. Unless he Field Blower, so it's Choice Bane's off. He's doing more damage. Okay, the only problem right now is just finding our energy. Because if we run out of energy, this could be bad. So we take out Espeon, and hopefully we have energy prize so we can take him out of the prizes. Yes? Okay, good. As long as I can have still have energy for Diamond Gift, then I'm fine. That's all I need to know, because the only way we're going to lose is if we run out of energy to do Diamond Gift, so we got to be careful. But for now, I think we're kind of just smoking my opponent right now with Claw Slash. He probably plays more Hammers, right? Yeah, he probably plays more Hammers, so we got to watch out for that. He's probably going to Hammer us again. Or not, we'll see. We'll probably just Olympia into the Carbon Break and keep trying to get energy going. Super Rod again, okay. Ultra Ball. He's probably going to get him a Tapu Lele here. Let's see. Do you think we're going to have Lele or Shay? Probably Lele. Let's see if he gets it, though. Now he's going Garb. Okay. I guess he's going to Rototiller. Does he not play Lele or Shaman, then? Or Rangaroo or anything? I guess he doesn't. I guess not, because he wouldn't have went for it. I right, just say Burrow. Eevee? That's fine. Don't need it anymore. And Burrow, he's not even Rototiller, and he's just risking it, man. He's risking it. I admire this guy's guts. I don't want to put my Pokemon down. Might be too risky. We can take him out with Carbank, so I'll do that. I wanted to keep that Olympia in case of confusion, but I just want to keep building up energy. We're taking him out with Diamond Gift, and we can build some more energy up, which is all good to me. I'm going to build up uh, this line Karak in case we need to do Crunch. Because the thing is, right, he's not drawing many cards, right? Because he's going to have either top deck like a Sycamore or something. And if he just keeps mainly attaching Psychic Energies, we can punish him and discard it and put him in a spot where he doesn't have any energy thanks to Crunch. But I'll just keep using Carbon here, build up energy. I might even put another Carbon on the bench so I can keep putting energy on something. 
Like another card made with energy wouldn't be bad. He top decks a Flareon, but it ain't enough. I think I'll just do this. Uh, Brooklyn Hill. He might have some surprises. I'm not going to bother with that in case he delinquents me again. So I think I'm just going to diamond gift him for 40 and I'm going to keep putting the energy in play. I mean, at this point, we built up enough energy. I think we'll be okay from en en uh, any energy removal plays my opponent might try to do. So, okay, he's going to be able to attack with the garb now. But I don't think it matters anymore. I think we're just going to keep diamond gifting him and just keep loading up energy. I'm going to put two on that other carving so we can have more carving breaks to work with. Thank God that we're able to build up our energy like this. So yeah, I think we just take... Oh, and he topped the Sigmar! No! Oh, whoops, I just hit my laptop with my elbow, but <laughs> rip me. But can he retreat into the garb? Even if he does, we just take him out with either line cut rock. I mean, at this point, we pretty much have dominance over the game, I think. Strong. Yeah, I think I'll just retreat. No, actually, no. Yeah, I think we just take him out of Diamond Gift here. My, I should have been more wary of an end, I guess. An end to two. But we have, like, three different attackers to go into. Even if he does end me to two, I don't know if it matters at this point. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, we have so many attackers built up. We just want Lysander. Ooh, he's gonna take out... Luckily, we still have the strong energy in our hand. I think he's knocking me out, is he? That choice ban, I think, gives him enough damage. Let's see. So, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160. Oh, I think he's 10 short. I think he's actually 10 short here. I don't know. He might be. I'm thinking of the math right now. And he keeps my carving brain alive, which is also pretty good. So, we still have more ways to get energy in play in case he does actually knock me out here. Even with the choice ban, I literally think he's actually 10 short. Yeah, he's 10 short. Oh my god. Wow. That must suck. Okay, we're just gonna burn items. I don't even we, we have literally have two prizes left to take. We can just burn our items here. At this point, it does not matter anymore. So we won't need N anymore. We won't need Brooklyn Hill. Alright, do I need the uh, we'll play the other ultra ball, I guess. We'll get rid of the other line can rock. Yeah, it's fine. We don't need these two guys anymore, I don't think so. We can just get rid of them. Keep everything in our hand. Yeah, just knock them out. Claw Slash. 130 damage. Bye bye, Garb. Get out of here with your garbage. Literally, Kappa, get it? See? <laughs> get it? Because Garbador is garbage. Literally, because it's a garbage card, because it's annoying and it's, it's the stupidest card ever made. But also, it's literally a pile of garbage that attacks you. <laughs> See what I did there? I should be a comedian. But the worst case scenario, he gets a Divide GX. Yep, end of one, so I'm glad I just burned all those items. Worst case scenario, my opponent does a Divide GX. Oh, look at that energy. Hammer Tails? <gasps> yes, thank god. Get out of here with that garbage. Alright. Side thing, alright. Worst case, he would have Divide GX me, and then he could have manipulated more damage. He would have been able to take out my Carving Break and my Line Croc. But yeah, we win the game, we just take him out Lycan Fang. See, you can go Lycan Fang in these situations where your opponent doesn't play many bench Pokemon, so you can't win the game with Dan and we top deck Shaman, that's just dirty. But we will knock him out with a Lycan Fang GX for 240 damage. Absolutely vicious. And see ya later, Espeon Garb. Two Espeon Garb decks in a row, and Line Karak prevails. And we even get another pack to open up, which is nice. So we will open that pack up right now. But we'll probably do one more game and then end the video. I'm feeling pretty good right now beating those two Garb decks. Serving Justice out to Garb. As much as I hate Garb, it just, it's so satisfying to beat those decks. But we will open up that Steam Siege pack, which is locked, right? Yeah, okay, good. So I'm pretty sure the daily challenge packs that you get are not locked. I was thinking like the, the wheel ones were. But anyways, will we pull something? I'm hoping not. So our next Guardians Rising pack, we pull something? Okay, good. Just an Avalog. So that means our next Guardians Rising pack might have... A GX in it or a secret rare that'd be good one thing I'm thinking of doing is just grinding out tournaments and try and get a bunch of secret rare um well not secret rares, but Guardians Rising packs to trade off for like the secret rare max potions and all right let's go find another game here with our line deck we'll do one more game those two guard matchups were perfect they went really nicely but we will get at least one more game in with our deck here and showcase it it was nice to beat those garb annoying decks but we'll do one more game see how it goes and it looks like we are going to be up against Volcanion which I still think is a good matchup as long as you're Vaporeon and Eevee 
is not prized. The Volcanian matchup should go fairly well, so let's just hope it does. So, we we'll just have to wait for my opponent here. Just wait a few seconds. Tick tock, tick tock. Any day now. Game's still loading up, I guess, but that's fine. But he's gonna have to hurry up. Because I ain't waiting. There we go. Alright. See. He's gonna take five years to call the coin flip, too. Really? Come on. There we go. Alright, nice. And we win the coin flip, which is also pretty nice. Now, if we start with Rockruff, we can easily get knocked out by Baby Volk. So we do need to watch out for that. Okay, good. We start with Carbink, which is the perfect starter. I'm not gonna play Brooklet Hill because that helps him, but it looks like Vaporeon is in our hand. So I'm gonna level ball for Eevee here. And then get Vaporeon down. Which seems good. And before Eevee's price, that would suck, but for now, we're okay. We do need a supporter though, too, because our hand is a little dead right now. So that's that's that. So you start baby ball. Oh, look at that. Ultra ball. Even better. We can play that next turn for Tapu Lele. If it's in the deck. It is, okay. So all of our line crops are in the deck too. So I'll just put the Eevee down, we'll Fighting Energy U, and we'll pass. And then next turn, we will Ultra Ball the way our Brooklyn Hill, get Vaporeon down, and hopefully we can go off. That would be awesome. Maybe even we can discard an energy so we can, you know, use it for carbon. That'd be nice. We can just build up more energy. Because one problem with using the uh, the uh, Line Croc deck is, obviously, it takes a few turns to build up your energy. So maybe Carbon Break can help us with last time Carbon, but I do need to be careful if he takes out Vaporeon. That's the only thing I kind of have to watch out for. So, just gotta be careful. Max Elixir, and at least he ain't doing it to Baby into Volcanion, but he's only gonna have room for two Volcanions on his bench, which is pretty nice. Sycamore. Two energies. I that's not good. That lets him do Power Hater. Maybe our Carbon will live, though. That'd be nice. If he has to power heater here and put two energies on like a Shaman and a Lele, that'd be nice. Instead of putting on a Volcanium EX. Ooh, he's, I'm, I'm glad he's using his max elixirs on stuff that isn't Volcanium EX. That is awesome. If he doesn't even hit one here, it's even more awesome. There, what? He put the Volcanium down before the max elixir. I mean, I know it didn't hit, but that was still a really weird play by him. Unless he misclicked. I don't know. I don't know why he did that. But yeah, we're in a decent spot right now. Um, so yeah, if we hit an energy here and we're able to do a carving break, that would be really cool. DCE. That works. Because then we can just get rid of that with, uh, that. And then we can, you know, carving break it onto our good old Lycan Rock. So grab the Lele. We will put our Vaporeon down. We just gotta watch out for that Lysander, which is already in his discard pile, which is not good. Because he needs one energy and a Via Seeker and our Vaporeon goes bye-bye. So we gotta be really careful. But if we have Rescue Stretcher, then we're still fine. So we'll grab the Sycamore, and we will play the Professor Sycamore here, if it lets me. There we go. And what are we going to get? Carving Break? We don't hit it. Yikes. I think we just Strong Energy. Nah, we'll put it on the Rock Rough, and it'll pass. Rip. We didn't hit the Carving Break, which kind of sucks, but we can still build up some energy. And we can do Escape Rope next turn. And if our Vaporeon survives, my plan is to try and Bloodthirsty Eyes that Volcano in the X and knock it out. And uh, knock him out with Carbon. If not, we're going to have the Dangerous Rogue it, which, that's still fine. Dangerous Rogue on an EX is still good. Oh my god, be a seeker. Don't tell me he's doing it. Okay, good. Just you grab a Sycamore, thank god. Because all he needs is an energy. And that Lysander, he's Steam Artillery, he's my Vaporeon. And it is over. So I'm glad he didn't do that. Oh my god, he lost three via Seekers. That is huge. Wow. That is huge. It looks like he's just going to try and take me out with a uh, Steam Artillery then. But yeah, the fact that he just lost two of those via Seekers. Oh my god. Now, literally, the odds of him hitting Lysander are very slim. He'll either go Power Heater or Steam Artillery. Skyfield. Okay, that's fine. We can bump that with Parallel City, which would help us. Hmm. This is going pretty good though. Um, I mean, does he is he even put anything down with that sky field? Because if not, that was kind of a useless play. If he just knocks me out, that sky field is kind of dumb. But okay, it looks like he isn't, which means I can put my own carving down. Okay, we're gonna bring out the rock rock, and I'm hoping here we do not whiff the blank rock. We should be okay though. 
should be okay. So we'll just get rid of these two, that's fine. Can't really take advantage of Skyfield with our hand anyway, so it's not a big deal. But yeah, if we whiff Lion Can Rock, this is going to be bad. So I'm hoping Lion Can Rock does not get whiffed. We have all, we still have some Ultra Balls. We whiffed it. <laughs> My god. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Well, that's fine. I think we just knock him out here with uh, a Cell Rock. But, I mean, his Volcanion's barely powered up anyways. I'm not really too scared of it. Um, but we, we'll need to find a Lysander here so that we can take out that Volcanion. Or the Lankrock. I don't know. But that's fine. We'll take him out still. He's still going to struggle to take out this Lankrock GX anyways. So I'm not really in threat of getting knocked out regardless. Would have been nice to do the Bloodthirsty Eyes play though, but it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, and he concedes. He's like, nah, I, I can't I can't deal with it. And ooh, we got we got some of our daily Evo done. Let's check out what he had. Did he have Turdinator in the deck? Yeah, he did. I mean, pretty solid Volcanian list from the looks of it. He kind of just, I guess, I didn't get unlucky, but I guess he didn't get what he needed. But yeah, I think that'll wrap up today's video. I think we showed off the deck fairly well. We showed off how Vaporeon can be used. We showed off the deck against those Garb decks, which I think is always a win in my books to beat Garb. We even get the Toad off the ladder. We opened up a few packs. Today's video was pretty good. It was a productive dang day as Negan would say. But yeah, thank you guys for watching the video, and I'll see you guys on another Peace Show video. Help me on the road to 2,000 subs, and I'll see you guys on another video. Is Lion Croc good now? Let's find out. And yeah, see you guys later. Peace out.